This lecture is a summary of this whole course. First, uh, let's revisit the, the topics that we covered in this course. Uh, in the beginning, we talked about the natural language processing and how it can enrich text representation. We then talked about uh, how to mine knowledge about the language, natural language used uh, to uh, express the, what's observed in the world in text data. And in particular, we talked about how to mine word associations. We then talked uh, about how to analyze topics in text, how to discover topics and analyze them. This can be regarded as knowledge about the observed world. And then we talked about uh, how to mine knowledge about uh, the observer, and particularly talked about uh, uh, how to mine opinions and do sentiment analysis. And finally, we talked about the text-based prediction, which has to do with uh, predicting values of other real-world variables based on text data. And in discussing this, we also discussed the rule of non-text data, which can contribute uh, additional predictors for uh, the prediction problem and also it can provide a context for analyzing text data and in particular we talked about how to use context to analyze topics so here are the key high-level takeaway messages from this course I'm going to go over each of these major topics and point out what are the key uh, takeaway messages that you should uh, remember first in NLP and the text representation, uh, you should realize that NLP is always very important for any text applications because it enriches text representation. The more NLP, uh, the better text representation we can have. And this further enables more accurate knowledge discovery to discover uh, deeper knowledge buried in text. However, the current state of the art of natural language processing uh, is still not robust enough and so as a result the robust text mining technologies today tend to be based on word representation and tend to rely a lot on statistical analysis as we've that discussed in this course and you may recall we've mostly um, used word-based representations and we've relied a lot on statistical techniques and statistical learning techniques particularly in word association mining and analysis, uh, the important points are first, uh, we introduced the two concepts for two basic and complementary relations of words, paradigmatic and syntagmatic relations. These are actually very general relations between elements in any sequences. If you take it uh, uh, as meaning uh, elements that occur in similar context in the sequence, and elements that tend to co-occur with each other and these relations might also be meaningful for other sequences of data. We also talked a lot about the text similarity when we dis, um, discuss how to uh, discover paradigmatic relations we compare the, uh, the context of words to discover words that share a similar context. At that point uh, we uh, talked about uh, representing text data with a vector space model and we talked about uh, some retrieval techniques such as BM25 for measuring uh, similarity of text and for assigning weights to terms TF, IDF, weighting, etc. And this part is well connected to text retrieval. There are other techniques that can be relevant here also. Uh, the next point is about co-occurrence analysis of text and we introduced uh, some information theory concepts such as entropy, conditional entropy and mutual information. These uh, are not only very useful uh, for uh, measuring the co-occurrences of words and they are also very useful for analyzing other kind of data and they're useful for for example for feature selection in textual categorization as well. So this is another important uh, uh, concept to know. And then we talked about the topic mining and analysis. And that's where we introduced the probabilistic topic model. We spent a lot of time to explain the basic uh, topic model, PISA, in detail. And this is also the basis for understanding uh, LDA, which is um, theoretically uh, more opinion model, but uh, we did not have enough time to really um, go in depth in introducing LDA. 
but in practice, um, PLSA uh, seems as effective as LDA, and it's simpler to implement. It's also more efficient. In this part, we also introduce some general concepts that uh, would be useful to know. One is generative model. This is a general method for uh, modeling text data and modeling other kinds of data as well. And we talked about the maximum likelihood estimator and uh, the EM algorithm for solving uh, the problem of computing maximum likelihood estimator. So these are all general techniques that uh, tend to be very useful in other scenarios as well. Then we talked about the uh, text clustering and text categorization. Those are two important building blocks in any uh, text mining application systems. In text clustering, we talked about the, how we can solve the problem by using a slightly different mixture model than the probabilistic topic model. And we then also briefly reviewed uh, some similarity-based uh, approaches to text clustering. In categorization, we also talked about the two kinds of approaches. One is generative classifiers. They rely on base rule to, uh, to infer the conditional probability of a category given text data. In particular, we introduced the naive base in detail. Now, this is a, uh, a practical useful technique uh, for a lot of text uh, categorization tasks. We also briefly introduced some discriminative classifiers, uh, particularly logistic regression, um, k-nearest neighbor, and SVM. They are also very important. They are very popular. And they are very useful for text categorization as well. In both parts, we also discussed how to evaluate the, um, the results. And evaluation is quite important because uh, if the meshes that you use don't really reflect the utility of the method, then it would give you misleading results. So it's very important to get evaluation right. And we talked uh, about evaluation of categorization in detail with a lot of uh, specific measures. Then we talked about the sentiment analysis and opinion mining. And that's where we uh, introduced the sentiment classification problem. And although it's a special case of text categorization, but we um, talked about how to extend or improve the text categorization method by using more sophisticated features that uh, would be needed for sentiment analysis. We did a review of some commonly used complex features for text analysis. And then we also talked about how to capture the order of these categories in sentiment classification. And in particular, we introduced the ordinal logistic regression. Then we also talked about the latent aspect the rating analysis. This is an unsupervised way of using a generative model to understand and review data in more detail. In particular, it allows us to understand the decomposed ratings uh, of um, a reviewer on different aspects of a topic. So given text reviews with overall ratings, the method would allow us to infer the ratings on different aspects. And it also allows us to infer the reviewer's latent weights on these aspects, uh, which aspects are more important to the reviewer can be reviewed as well. And this enables a lot of interesting applications. Finally, in the discussion of text-based prediction, we mainly talked about the joint mining of text and non-text data, as they are both very important for prediction. And um, we particularly talked about how text data can help uh, non-text data and vice versa. Uh, in the case of using non-text data to help the text data analysis, we talked about the contextual text mining. We introduced the contextual PLSA as a generalization or generalized model of PLSA to allow us to incorporate the context variables such as time and location. And this is a general way to allow us to review a lot of interesting topical patterns in text data. We also introduced the net PLSA. In this case, we use social network or network uh, in general of text data to uh, help analyzing topics. And finally, we talked about how time series data can be used as context to mine potentially causal uh, topics in text data. Now, in the other way of using text to help, uh, help uh, interpreting patterns discovered from non-text data, we did not really discuss um, anything in detail, but just provide a reference. But I should stress that that's actually a very important direction um, 
who know about uh, if you want to build a practical tax mining uh, systems because understanding and interpreting patterns is quite important. So this is a summary of the key uh, takeaway messages and I hope uh, these would be very useful to you for building any uh, tax mining applications or doing further study of these algorithms. And this should provide a good basis for you to read uh, frontier research papers to know more about uh, uh, more advanced algorithms or to uh, invent new algorithms yourself. So to know more um, about this topic, uh, uh, I would uh, suggest uh, you to look into other areas in more depth. And during this short period of time of this course, we could only touch the basic concepts, basic principles of tax mining. And we emphasize the um, the coverage of practically useful algorithms and this is at the cost of covering some more advanced algorithms um, only briefly or uh, in many cases we omit the discussion of a lot of advanced algorithms. So to learn more about this subject uh, you should definitely learn more about the natural language processing because this is the foundation for all text-based applications. Uh, the more NLP you can do the better representation of text you can get and then the deeper uh, knowledge you can discover. So this is very important. The second area that you should look into is statistical machine learning. Um, and these techniques are now the backbone techniques for um, not just uh, um, text analysis applications but also for NLP. A lot of NLP techniques are uh, nowadays actually based on supervised machine learning. So they are very important uh, because they are uh, key to also understanding some advanced NLP techniques and naturally they will provide more tools for doing text analysis in general. Now a particularly interesting area um, called deep learning has attracted a lot of attention recently. It has also shown promise in many application areas especially in speech and vision and now it has been applied to text data as well. So, for example, recently there has been work on using deep learning to do sentiment analysis to achieve better accuracy. And so that's one example of advanced techniques that we weren't able to cover, but that's also very important. And the other area uh, that has emerged in statistical learning is the word embedding technique, where they can learn uh, vector representation of words. And then these vector representations would allow you to compute the similarity of words. As you can see, this provides directly a way to discover potentially paradigmatic relations of words and the results that people have got so far are uh, very impressive. That's another promising technique that we did not have time to touch. Um, but of course, uh, whether these new uh, techniques uh, would lead to practical useful techniques that work much better than the current uh, technologies is still open question that has to be examined. And no serious evaluation has been done yet in, uh, for example, uh, examining the practical value of word embedding other than word similarity um, based evaluation. But nevertheless, these are advanced techniques that uh, surely will make impact in text mining in the future. So it's very important to know more about these. Statistical learning is also key to predictive modeling and which is very crucial for many big data applications and we did not uh, talk about that predictive modeling component but this is mostly about the regression or um, categorization techniques and this is another reason why statistical learning is, is important. Uh, we also suggested you to learn more about data mining and that's simply because general data mining algorithms can always be applied to text data which uh, can be regarded as a special case of um, data, um, the general uh, data. So there are many applications of data mining techniques. In particular, for example, pattern discovery would be very useful to generate uh, uh, interesting features uh, for text analysis. And recently, information network uh, mining techniques can also be used to analyze text information network. So these are all uh, good to know. Uh, in order to develop effective text analysis techniques. And finally, uh, we also recommend you to learn more about the text retrieval, information retrieval, or search engines. Uh, 
And this is especially important if you're interested in building practical uh, text application systems. And a search engine would be an essential system component in any text-based applications. And that's because text data are created for humans to, um, to consume. So humans are the, at the best position to understand text data. And it's important to have human in the loop in any uh, big text data applications. So it can, in particular, help uh, text uh, mining systems in two ways. One is to effectively reduce the data size from uh, a large collection to a small collection with the most relevant text data that only matter uh, for the, the particular application. Right? Uh, so the other is to provide a way to annotate, to explain patterns. And this has to do with knowledge provenance. Once we discover some knowledge, we have to figure out whether the, the discovery is really reliable. And so we need to go back to the original text data and verify that. And that's when the search engine is very important. Uh, moreover, some techniques of information retrieval, for example, BM25, vector space, and language models are also very useful for text data, uh, data mining. We only mentioned some of them, but uh, if you know more about the text retrieval, you'll see that there are many techniques that are useful. Uh, another technique that's useful is the indexing technique uh, that enables quick response of a search engine to a user's query. And such techniques can be very useful for building efficient uh, text mining systems as well. So finally, I want to uh, remind you of this big picture um, for harnessing big text data that I showed you uh, at the very beginning of the semester. Right? So in general, to build a big text data application system, we need two kinds of techniques, text retrieval and text mining. And uh, text retrieval, as I explained, is to uh, help convert big text data into a small amount of most relevant data for a particular problem and can also help uh, providing knowledge provenance, help interpreting patterns later. Text mining has to do with uh, further analyzing the relevant data to discover the actionable knowledge that can be directly useful for uh, decision making or many other tasks. So this course covered uh, text mining and there's a companion course uh, called text retrieval and search engines that covers text retrieval. Now, if you haven't uh, taken that uh, course, uh, it will be useful for you to take it, especially if you are interested in uh, building a text uh, application system. And taking both courses would give you a complete set of practical skills for building such a system. So in the very end, I just would like to uh, thank you for taking this course. I hope you have uh, learned uh, useful knowledge and skills in text mining and uh, analytics. As you see from our discussions, uh, there are a lot of application opportunities for this kind of techniques, and there are also a lot of open challenges. So I hope uh, you can use what you have learned uh, to build a lot of useful applications to benefit the, the society, and uh, to also uh, join the research community to discover uh, new techniques for text mining and analytics. Thank you. Mm -hmm.